I'm back everybody, it's Keezy. And today, I have a nice little video for you from, I think it's Russell Talk? No, Parts for Unknown. Video from Parts for Unknown. This is 13 pointless, but fun, Royal Rumble facts. Now, the Royal Rumble is actually coming up um, about two weeks, uh, two weeks from this coming Saturday. Um, they aren't many matches announced for it yet. Um, I know we got the men's rumble, the women's rumble, um, the four, fatal four way for the universal title, and that's all for right now. Um, as of right now, I don't have anyone picked to win either rumble match, which I like. I like that because you don't know who's gonna win. But let's get into this video. Do you remember those all about the numbers videos that WWE used to do to promote the Royal Rumble? They'd have some interesting things on there about longest times, most eliminations, best numbers, that sort of thing. But you know, they're also rubbish things. For 20 long years, the warlord had the record. There have been four tons of humanity in the Rumble. That's 6,000 big shows or some other stupid nonsense. Like, what? I mean, they're just interesting facts. I mean, it's kind of like this video. I mean, you can't call somebody out for doing it when you're doing the same thing. It's just pointless facts. But we love pointless facts. I mean, like, you can find, like, a pop quiz somewhere. Like, oh, I know this answer because I watched a video about it. What's the point in even knowing that? But it's fun, I guess, in a way. And these facts I'm about to give you now are equally as pointless, but I'm sure you'll also agree are pretty fun. Most of them have actually come from Darren's win-loss records, facts, and stats. A brilliant little site that's got loads of fun info about the Rumble. It's linked to in the video description down below. I'm Luke Owen, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are 13 pointless but fun facts about the WWE Royal Rumble. Number one, the earliest a Royal Rumble event has ever taken place was on January 15th. Ho, 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 boy! We're starting out hot today. The Royal Rumble is traditionally a late January affair with 20. Yeah, it seems like the last. It used to be Sundays, but the pay is on Saturdays now, which is better. Um, it used to be like at the end of January. Four of the 37 Rumble events, including this show, taking place in the last week of the month. However, things could have been maybe different had WWE followed the lead of the second Rumble in 1989, which took place smack bang in the middle of January on the 15th. Now, prior to 2004, it was much more common to see the Rumble air slightly earlier than we used to now, typically hovering around the 19th to 23rd of January, but this was taking the eager beaver thing too far. I mean, the 23rd is kind of late. It's like the next to last week of... The uh, month. Oh, number two, the Miz sucks at Royal Rumbles, but he's not alone. For 20 long years, the Warlord held the record for the shortest. I mean, there's a lot of people who suck at Royal Rumbles. Like, there's only people who barely been in the room for like 30 minutes. Like, combined time. Like, there's a few people who just. Who are, there's people who have never even been in a Royal Rumble match. Look at Cedric Alexander. He has never. Being in a Rumble match in his eight years of being in WWE. I'm as well about one time Santino wasn't ready. But neither the Warlord or Santino are statistically the worst at Rumbles. The Miz has been in, get this, 14 Rumbles and has eliminated, drum roll please, two people. He's been in Rumble matches for over two hours and has eliminated two wrestlers. That's one. He's, he's been in this match for a combined time of two hours. 14 Royal Rumble matches. You only eliminated two people? Two? Miz. Come on, bro. I like you. Come, you gotta get me eliminations up. Person for every seven rumbles, but it's actually worse than that because both of those eliminations were in the same f***ing rumble. The 2012 one where he eliminated R Truth and Alex Riley. He did technically eliminate John Cena from the 2011 rumble, but Miz was not an official entrant. So yeah, two eliminations in Royal Rumbles. Better luck this year, Miz. Charles Wright isn't far behind with only one elimination in eight rumble appearances, totaling over 35 minutes, and that one was helping Diesel eliminate Duke the Dumpster Drozzi in the 96 rumble. He's also been an Eight rumbles with five different gimmicks. And speaking of five. different gimmicks, Matt Bloom takes the crown for the suckiest rumble 
lad with six rumbles and zero eliminations despite being in the ring for nearly a combined 50 minutes. Zero eliminations in six appearances across his time as Prince Albert, Albert A-Train and everyone's favorite Lord Tensai. Johnny Knoxville has more eliminations than you, Matt. Bring it right back. Zero eliminations? I'm gonna let this play. Oh, oh. But zero? And also... Number three, coincidence. Five different gimmicks? Well, Mick Foley took me at four. Five. You have the Godfather? The Good Father? Kama Mustafa? What are the other two gimmicks? Now I'm just confused. I think not. Another star who narrowly misses being lumped in with Albert Godfather and The Miz is Shelton Benjamin. In his 10 appearances, he has eliminated just three men, and none of them were done by himself. Eliminating Booker T alongside Charlie Haas in 2003, Muhammad Hassan along with five others in 05, and in 07, he and a record seven other people eliminated Viscera. So yeah, not great. But what is more notable is the fact that he found himself eliminated by the same man three years straight. In the 05, 06, and 07 Rumbles, he was eliminated by Shawn Michaels. Isn't that mad? Amazingly, Dolph Ziggler nearly had the same record as he was. He got eliminated by Shawn Michaels three years in a row. I know this because I recently watched the Royal Rumbles. I think that I think all three were the same way with a super kick. I think. Eliminated by The Big Show in the 2011, 2012, and 2015 Rumble. In 2013, he was eliminated by Sheamus, and in 2014, was taken out by Ray. So it's not quite as coincidental or as, uh, or as interesting as the Shelton fact. So, um, yeah, that Shelton fact, eh? Number four, Hulk Hogan is a sourpuss. You can say a lot of things about Hulk Hogan, but one of the nice things you can say about him is that he is one of only nine people to win multiple Rumbles. However, he's also a mass. Fuck Hulk Hogan. Sore loser. He has twice been eliminated from the Rumble and then gone back in to eliminate the person who eliminated him. He did it first in 1989 against the best wrestler ever, the big boss man, Hooter Man. And then in 1992 was dumped over by Sid Justice, so Hogan just dragged him out too, and that helped Ric Flair win the whole thing. Looks like he's eating some sour grapes along with his vitamins. Now look, I know what you're thinking. Look, these are actually quite interesting. I don't think I would call them pointless. I mean, look, I don't need to know them, but they're fun to bring out at dinner parties when I'm trying to impress my in-laws. And look, I hear you. So check this shit out. Number five, no Royal Rumble winner has ever been born in November. Why do you know that? <laughs> And by the way, yes, I would. Anytime I I hear the name Hulk Hogan, I'm gonna have that reaction. I I don't care for Hulk Hogan. Fuck Hulk Hogan. <laughs> well, also, why do you know this? You have to do like immense studying. Well, not really immense studying. You have to, but you have to look up their birthdays for every person who's won the World Rumble. I'm like, hmm, hmm. All right, all these winners. No one's been born in November. It's like it's like the only month. Is it like the only month that no one's won that because every, so people have been born every other month except November? Is November the only month that a Roman member has not been mourning? Or is it Boom! How do you like them apples? This one is pretty self-explanatory. Somehow, among the 42 winners of the Royal Rumble, not a single one of them was born in November. Probably the closest we came to this not being a fact was in 2012, when November's own Chris Jericho should have won the Royal Rumble, but instead Sheamus did, born in January, and Nikki Bella, born in November, was the runner-up in the 2018 Rumble. Instead, that was won by Asuka, born in September. Right, okay, well, you know, let's have a look here. Cody Rhodes, no, oh, he's in June. Punk, ah, close, he's in October. Bailey, June again? Nia Jax, mate, that's even worse. Ha 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 ha! Tegan Knox, Tegan, November 15th, Tegan Knox, come on, Tegan! And if you want pointless facts that'll be ruined in just a few weeks' time, number six, CM Punk has spent two hours, 38 minutes. Uh, what? 
He spent two hours and 38 minutes in the Royal Rumble match, which is the same time as the running time of Ridley Scott's Napoleon. Okay. <laughs> I guess it is a useless fact. The Royal Rumble match, which is the same as the runtime of Ridley Scott's Napoleon. You know, you know, it's, it's all about that boom. Eat those apples up now, mm, yum 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 facts. And the worst is that this pervy record is going to be ruined this year because CM Punk has already declared himself for the 2024 Rumble. So let's all take a moment to soak in this incredible and novel achievement. Two hours and 38 minutes, the same as Ridley Scott's new movie, which I've relied- I just want to know, I just want to know this. So like, it's like, you have to like, you have to look some of this stuff up to get these facts for this video. Wait, huh? Oh, someone had to do the math for the time they were in this match to the time they got eliminated. Add it all up, then find a runtime of a random movie. Of a random movie. Oh, this movie was 20, two, two hours and 38 minutes. I just feel like this is like homework that your teachers gave you, or like just busy work that people give you just to have you some, give you something to do. And I just wouldn't do it. Because why? Why do you know this? <laughs> this is just why. It doesn't make sense to me. I've been told by Dan Layton feels quite long. long. Number seven. It's all about the numbers. On your gear. 2017 saw what could have been a new tradition as two wrestlers decided to sport their entry numbers for that year's Rumble on their ring gear. First of which isn't particularly surprised as it was his entire gimmick, that being the perfect 10 tie Dillinger, who pretty much always had the number 10 on his trunks, but it just so happened that that was his entry number that year. What's more surprising was Baron Corbin did the same thing three entries later for his Rumble debut at 13, something he would not repeat for subsequent years. Five years would pass before this would happen again, and to be honest, I'm not sure how intentional it was as the phenomenal one AJ Styles drew a number one, and it also happened to have a number one on his gear. Yeah, Baron Corbin had 13 on his trunks a lot as well, but you know. The more you know. And knowing is half the battle. Number 8. Lucky number 800. 1,260 wrestlers have laced up their boots or gone barefoot in the case of Rusev and Matt Riddle and stepped into the Royal Rumble across the event's history. Hall of Famers, world champions, all-time greats of the sport. Also them is. Of that 1,260, however, there have been some... Y'all gonna put some respect on Miz's name. I actually like the Miz. He's just not the best performer in the Royal Rumble match. He needs to fix that. Lesser entries, Michael Cole, No Way Jose, Gilbert, James Ellsworth, Salvatore Sincere, the list goes on and on. Another who had no business being in a rumble also happens to represent a milestone in the history of the event, that being a legendary raging bull and sidekick to Los Matadores, El Torito, who was the 800th ever entrant into a rumble match. This This is what I feel like this one would be easy to know. But you have to go back to every single Royal Rumble up until this time and count them. You have to count every new person in the Rumble match. Like it doesn't matter if you've been in it before, you've already been counted. If you're a new person, you are gonna get count, count sorry, hiccups. You're gonna get counted in this. I'm not counting everybody. No, I am not counting every single person who steps into the Royal Rumble match. I'm sorry. In 2014, at the peak of his powers, I guess, lasting 1 minute and 26 seconds, which is just 7 seconds less than former NXT and TNA world champion Bobby Roode across two different Rumble appearances. Just, just let that one sink in for a second. Number 9. It's all in the family. Given wrestling being a family business and all, it's no surprise that many sons, daughters, nieces, and nephews have followed in the footsteps of their elderly family members by competing in Royal Rumbles. Whether your last name is Rhodes, Blair, Neidhart, Anawaii, there's plenty of examples. Dom and Ray even became the first father and son to compete in the same Rumble in 2022. We've also seen husbands and wives compete in Rumbles, as both Edge and Beth Phoenix competed in the 2020 Rumbles. But I know what you're thinking. Look, Luke, Luke there, pal. Luke there, you handsome chap. Has there ever been a Rumble show where a son-in-law and mother-in-law have competed in Rumbles? And the answer to that is yes. 
That actually has happened before. In 2018, Aiden English competed in the men's rumble while his mother-in-law, Vicky Guerrero, would go on to compete in the women's rumble later that night. It's incredible to think, I guess, that that's not a regular thing. This is actually pretty wild to think about. Aiden English married a Guerrero. That's crazy. This is really wild to think about. Like, hmm. Awesome. Congratulations. Like, this, this, that's actually, that's not even a pointless fact. That's actually a fun fact. <laughs> It's, it's not happened since. Staggering, I know. Number 10, Double Duty times 4. As much hype as the two Rumble matches generate each year, there is always at least two to three matches sprinkled around the card to fill it out. While it is always hit and miss where the competitors in world title matches will do both the match and the Rumble, typically those in other miscellaneous bouts will fulfill their duties before then going to appear in a Rumble match. But of the 55 examples of Starrock doing so across 36 different Rumble events, one man stands tall as the ultimate Rumble workhorse, Cesaro. In 2013, 2015, 2017, and 2018, Cesaro competed both on the Rumble undercard as well as the Rumble itself. The Miz isn't too far behind him, competing in undercard matches as well as the Rumble in 2010, 2013, and 2015, which might be why he can never get any eliminations. He's always so blooming. Which is crazy to think about. You have a match early on in the night. You have to go to the bed. The adrenaline wears off. You have to get somehow get warmed up again to go back out there. And what if you're in there for a long time? You earned that paycheck that night. Tired. Number 11, only one person that spent 69 minutes in a Royal Rumble match and that person is Gold Dust. LOL! Number 12, only one person has ever lasted exactly 69 seconds in the Royal Rumble match. Nice! Yes, it's funny that Gold Dust has a combined time of 69 minutes, but what's funnier is that only one person in Royal Rumble history has a singular Rumble stretch that is exactly the funniest number in the world. The person who lasted 69 seconds in a Rumble, the great Carly! LOL! Of Carly's eight Rumble appearances, of which total around 20 minutes 21 seconds, which would arguably put him in the worst ever conversation had he not eliminated 10 people in that time, but it was the 2008 Rumble which only saw him last 69 seconds. Nice. Something that could either be seen as a disappointment or Perhaps a prelude to his time as the Punjabi playboy, that's up for you to decide, I guess. That's for Goldust, well, across his 12 appearances in the Rumble as Goldust, or the, of course, the artist formerly known as Goldust, he spent 69 minutes in total. Something that also weirdly kind of fits his gimmick the more you think about it. And finally, number 13, lucky number 16. Here is an odd one. Because of the length of time Royal Rumble has been part of our collective lives, stars of the past have appeared with stars of the present in Rumble matches. That means some wrestlers did Rumble matches or wrestled on the Rumble undercard during the Attitude Era or New Generation, then came back for modern day shows. For example, Molly Holly wrestled on the pre-show of the 2004 Rumble, then 14 years later entered the 2018 Rumble. In 2003, Tori Wilson defeated Dawn Marie on the Rumble card, then entered that 2018 Rumble 15 years later. Jim Duggan wrestled on both the 1992 and 2009 Rumbles, a gap of seven Years. Jeff Jarrett had the longest Rumble to Rumble stint of 20 years between 1999 and 2019, and Ivory defended the Women's Championship on the 2001 Rumble undercard, then wrestled in the 2022 Rumble, a gap of 21 years. All of those are single person records, but 16 years has two names. Well, it actually has four, as Trish Stratus defeated Jazz in 2002, then 16 years later was in the 2018 Rumble, and Victoria was on that same show with Molly Holly in 2004, and then competed in the Royal Rumble in 2021, 16 years later. But the two names names I want to focus on actually went from Rumble to Rumble with a 16-year gap, and those two names are Roddy Piper and Jimmy Snooker. They were both in the 1992 Royal Rumbles, their final Rumbles, until they were both in the 2008 Rumble, a gap of 16 years for both of them. And then, incredibly enough, they were both eliminated by the great Carly as part of that 69-second run. No, only kidding, it was Kane. But it would have been fun if it was Carly, though. There you go, 13 pointless but fun Royal Rumble facts. I hope you enjoyed it. We also look. There you go. 13 Rumble facts. Who do y'all think is going to win the Royal Rumble? Let me know in the comments below. But this is video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see y'all next time.